413 WMAZ Morning starts now. Clock Tower in Perry says it is 630 this morning. We can actually see it. There's no fog down there in Houston County, but we do have fog in other spots. We'll take a look at that map and what to expect today coming up. You know, taxes is a big part of, of uh, the funding that we get. Hundreds of people will have to start looking for a new job ahead of a private prison closing. How McCray Helena will also take an economic hit. Plus, why the family of a missing Johnson County man says they are certain his remains have been found. And a Central Georgia school introduced a new language option, how it's impacting students both inside and outside of the classroom coming up. Good Tuesday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over the Georgia National Fairgrounds in beautiful Houston County. The time is now 631 here on this November the 1st. This Tuesday morning is looking great on you. I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Caitlin Hicks, certainly looking better than yesterday. Like Alex said, we couldn't even see the clock tower from all that fog. Yes, exactly. And it's feeling better as well, Alex. Yeah, that's right. It's feeling better here in Macon. Once you work your way over towards Washington and Hancock counties, though, still running into some fog this morning. Looking at 50s on the board, even some 40s. That's the blue color you see over towards Meriwether County. 51 in Macon, 53 in Warner Robins, 54 in Cochrane. Getting your morning started in Dublin at 55, 61 down in McRae, and 50 in Unadilla this morning. The radar picture, we did see a few showers yesterday morning. This morning, not so much, but we are looking at that fog visibility down below a quarter of a mile in Sandersville, now up to two miles in Sparta, so improving there. But if you are, say, you know, west of uh, or east of Gordon this morning, something to be mindful of as you walk out the door. Dense fog advisory in effect for Jasper and Putnam counties, although we are seeing the fog, as we just saw, extend back down into Washington County as well. So, just allow a few extra minutes to get to work in school this morning. Today, look for a high temperature at 76, partly cloudy skies, peaks of sunshine. We're saying sunrise comes your way at 752. We will be drier today. The chance for a sprinkle tomorrow, maybe. We'll map out the details of that and we'll be even warmer by the weekend. I'll have all that for you here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Alex. Today, Bib commissioners will decide the fate of another Vice Mart when they determine whether to revoke Alliance Food Mart's alcohol license. We spoke to the county's code enforcement director to find out how they classify these stores. Businesses that qualify to sell alcohol are drug stores, gas stations, grocery stores, and food marts. So-called vice marts do not qualify for an alcohol license. JT Rickardson with Macon Bib Code Enforcement says sometimes these vice marts try to pose as food marts for inspections to qualify. He says they have to be thorough when they drop in to do their random inspections. We even check the expiration dates just to make sure that these aren't just props put into the store just so they can get by and, and skirt around the, the intent of the ordinance. Well, Rickinson says he's working with his department to develop a more consistent inspection schedule for all those businesses, but he says all their visits will continue to be unannounced. It's 6:33 in McCray Helena, a private prison is closing in 30 days leaving hundreds of people looking for new jobs. The company that owns the prison, Nashville-based CoreCivic, says they hope their 252 employees will get jobs with the state prison system or at other correction facilities. The city is also bracing for an economic hit as a private company, CoreCivic, pays taxes. Last year, the Telfair County Tax Commissioner's Office said the company paid nearly $651,000 in property taxes for the $48 million facility. Once the state takes over, the city can no longer tax the site. The Telfair County Sheriff says they might have to talk about adjusting their budget. We're, we're dependent upon, um, you know, taxes is a big part of, of uh, the funding that we get to, to operate as an office. So it's certainly a, certainly a concern there. The state has bought the McRae private prison for $130 million, but so far they have not confirmed with 13 WMAZ what they're going to do with it. County officials say core civic employees tell them the state is making plans for the prison by turning it into a woman's prison by early December. Well, the family of a missing Johnson County man says they are 100% certain his remains have been found. Don Hightower's family released a statement after a body was found on Saturday in Lawrence County. Hightower went missing after leaving his sister's house after the Georgia Florida game in 2021. The Lawrence County Sheriff's Office says a deer hunter found Hightower's car off Highway 319 Friday almost exactly a year later. GBI investigators are working on an autopsy to posit positively identify those remains. And this morning, a man is dead after a crash that happened last week. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says 56-year-old Darren Dwayne Lewis died from his injury Sunday night. The accident happened last Thursday when Lewis's Hyundai Sonata crossed the center line of Pierce Avenue and hit a tractor trailer. In Warner Robins, the animal control says that they're seeing more rabies cases. 
The agency made a Facebook post warning of the last two cases within six months. Rabies is a viral disease caused by the bite of rabid animals like raccoons. The post mentions animals. The post mentions animal mentions keeping pets restrained, staying up to date with vaccinations and not feeding feral or wild animals, which could get you fined. It's against the law to feed um, feral cats. You need to quit feeding the feral cats out there. If you're going to feed them, you need to go and catch them and take them to your residence or whatever and get them rabies shots and everything. That's the most important thing, the rabies shots. Now, he added that they do not offer any vaccinations for animals at their center, but he says rabies shots are normally around 20 bucks. Election day now just a week away and candidates in Georgia's key races are fitting in as many campaign stops as they can before voters head to the polls November 8th. So this morning, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock will be in Fort Valley as part of his early vote bus tour. That starts at 1030. Then later in the day, he heads to Thomasville. His challenger, Republican candidate Herschel Walker, will be in Augusta this afternoon. Also today, former Vice President Mike Pence will be in Georgia. He'll make stops in Cumming and Gainesville, stumping for Governor Brian Kemp. This comes after the incumbent governor took on his Democratic opponent, Stacey Abrams, in a debate Sunday night. Both sides are working to get people to the polls during these final days of their campaigns. And with many of you heading to the polls to vote on key races on the local, state and national levels, we want to make sure that you are prepared, which is why we are dedicating a half hour of coverage this week to bring you everything you need to know ahead of Election Day. From finding your polling place to how your vote is counted, We'll also introduce you to our election night panelists and how we're tracking votes county by county. So join us on Thursday at 530 right here on 13 WMAZ. 637 this morning, Kennesaw State University announced a student is among one of the more than 150 people killed in a deadly Halloween crowd surge in South Korea. School leaders say Stephen Balesi was one of the 153 victims reportedly killed in the crush. Valesi, a 20 year old international business major, was one of 11 KSU students on the study abroad trip to South Korea. The other 10 students are safe, the school says. His dad, Steve Valesi, posted to Twitter yesterday that his family received confirmation of his death. Well, this morning, the defamation lawsuit filed against former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani is moving forward. A federal judge declined to dismiss the case by two women who served as election workers in Georgia in November of 2020. Last December, the two women accused Giuliani of defaming them by falsely stating that the pair engaged in election fraud while counting ballots at State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Giuliani argued to dismiss the lawsuit, saying the claims against him were inadequately pleaded and barred by First Amendment protections for free speech. The federal judge rejected those arguments. Well, the Community Education Group says it's been awarded a $100,000 grant for monkeypox vaccination and education efforts among the LGBTQ community in 13 states. They received the grants to make and distribute materials aimed at reducing cultural stigmas and barriers related to the virus. They will also create and distribute monkeypox digital resource guides to more than 300 health departments, along with rural health care associations and LGBTQ groups. They'll accept grant applications from organizations from states like Georgia, Alabama, and Kentucky. Except when it comes to animals, these vaccines, these medications, they're costly. Either, you're either paying in high quantity amounts for a long period of time, or the, the overall cost itself is just high. Well, this vet tech student has a fur friend of his own, and he says pets have just as many doctor visits as their owners, if not more. So how can you save yourself a costly trip to the vet? Our reporter Camila Williams shares ways to save on pet care coming up today at 530. Still ahead, our morning reporter TJ Anthony tells you about a make in school started incorporating sign language into their curriculum. Plus, we show you how a central Georgia school is remembering Georgia's military men and women. The stories are coming up in a little bit. Right now, though, it is 639 on this first day of November. I just can't believe it's already here. Exactly. Thanksgiving is coming up. Christmas is coming up. The new year is coming up right around the corner. I know, but you know what? We should have known better because this year has been flying by too. It has been, honestly, Alex. And yeah. the weather, it's been on a roller coaster as well. It has been. You know, October was really cool for us. I mean, we had mornings in the 20s across central Georgia, beginning November on a warmer note. Here's a live look across downtown. We've got temperatures in the 50s this morning, 51 in Macon. 
We've got 53 in Warner Robins, 57 in Gordon, 58 in Eatonton, and starting this morning off at 50 degrees in Unadilla. Also starting the morning off with some fog as you head over towards Hancock County, Washington County. Visibility down below a quarter mile, also up into Sparta. Visibility at two miles, about five miles here in Macon. So generally speaking, off towards the north and to the east this morning is where the densest fog is. A dense fog advisory in effect for Jasper and Putnam counties, although we are seeing that expand back down into Sandersville as well. That's going to run until 11 a.m. this morning. The radar picture, unlike yesterday, is quiet right now across the area and really quiet for the most part across the southeast. You're running into some rainfall back off towards the Houston area down into Texas, dry across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, on into South Carolina. Then once you get up into eastern North Carolina, into Hampton Roads, of region of Virginia, running into some rainfall this morning, but otherwise 40s and 50s across the board. Now, going to warm up into the 70s this afternoon. 70 itself by the noon hour. Then once we get later into the afternoon, I'm going with a high temperature of about 76 here in Macon. Everywhere or everybody somewhere right around that with some partly cloudy skies. Then into the night tonight, some more clouds than we saw last night, but we are going to be looking at 50s once again tomorrow morning. Once we warm up tomorrow afternoon, we will be back into the upper 70s and then tomorrow or for Thursday morning rather back down into the 50s and then you guessed it right back into the 70s. So it's the same song and dance pretty much every day this this week with partly cloudy skies continuing into Friday and awesome football Friday night forecast. Then into the weekend that looks a little ominous coming across the Mississippi River, right? Well, that would be a cold front that is going to be falling apart as it works its way towards central Georgia, but still the possibility of some Atlantic moisture maybe in the neighborhood on Sunday. We'll have to watch for the possibility of that. The models have some ironing out to do to see if that's even uh, likely at this point uh, just yet. 70s for the next few days back to 80 by the time we get to Saturday. Our average high is 74, so these are above of average as we head into the next few days. The other thing that is coming fairly quickly, daylight saving time coming to a conclusion. That's going to be overnight Saturday into Sunday. The official change at 159.59. At that point, the clocks will go back to one o'clock. Also a good time to remind you to replace the batteries and critical alarms. I'm talking about smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and yes, the weather radio as well. Sunset on Sunday. How about 539 p.m.? Today, look for a high temperature of 76, peaks of sunshine. Sunrise this morning is at 752. Then for tonight, 53 is our overnight low. Sunset is at 644. There's your seven-day forecast. Again, 70s for the next few days. I put a 10% chance rain on Saturday and Sunday. Again, we've got some details to figure out there. Maybe some moisture in the area, but highs in the 80s for those three days. Coming up tomorrow on 13 WMAZ Morning. Came on June 1st, and one of the first persons that I was able to meet was Ms. Hunt. Ms. Hunt has been a invaluable part of my transition team. Central Georgia, it's time to put some yay in your day. Mia Hunt is a Twiggs County educator who is putting the yay in people's day. Hunt wears many hats as an educator, but also stays busy in her community as well. I want you to join me tomorrow to learn what drives Hunt to be a positive light to everyone she meets. We're going to be putting some yay back in your day starting tomorrow morning at 6 right here on 13.